We are live. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Um, a nice warm welcome to my two lovely guests, uh, Laura and Mandy. Um, we'll just wait for a few people to join us. Oh, just had a notification to so say we've gone live. Um, still need a haircut, still need a shave. Um, <laughs> oh, still nobody watching. That's me. Yet. No, pardon. That's me that's watching. Seven people joining us already. Um, we dad. So, yeah, we've got Hi, Tracy, dad. James and Gemma. Hi, everyone. Hope you're all doing Hi. well. So, once again, join back. it's the first day of lockdown, phase two. Um, I hope people are keeping their spirits nice and high, pardon the pun, um, and feeling really positive and looking forward to this. So, we've decided, the three of us, uh so please uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, zoom in through. Uh, so we've decided that over lockdown we are going to entertain you we're going to interact with you keep your um uh, connection with us and with each other going um and we've um decided that we're going to host these evenings every now and again trying to make it a weekly um um event um but we'll see how it goes um so we'll say hello in a moment so actually no we'll say hello now let's see who's who's um here watching with us so we've got del uh i'll click on him so we can say hi we've got gracie hello uh we've got james good evening don't feel that that picture is James, for some reason. No. Uh, no. We've got Gemma. Hi, Jen. We've got Michelle. We've got Katrina. I also don't Ding. feel that that picture is her. Uh, we've got Nicola. I also don't feel that that's her don't photo. That's her. <laughs> <laughs> we've got Paige and Heather and Chong. Yep, she was, on last, yeah. she was on last week. Uh, uh, we've got Michelle. Oh, I've said Michelle. We've got yeah. Julie. We've got Craig. Uh, <laughs> we've got Sue. Good evening, Sue. Evening. We've got Ebony. Good uh, evening. We've got, oh, we've got Heather. I've said Heather. Hi. Right. Uh, we've also got, oh, I'm just a Joe Page. <laughs> I don't know. It's all moving around. Uh, we've got Nicole. We've got Leslie. So many people. We've got Rian. No. Wow. We've got Austin, but I won't put his post up. Um, <laughs> I ain't having that sort of feel for my page. Um, we've got Sue. <laughs> and we've got Jade. Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Ebony. We we really enjoy it as well. It makes me a hell of a lot less lonely. Uh, <laughs> 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 it means I can get them to do loads of work instead. Um, <laughs> we've also got Hayley uh, and Yasmin. Oh, saucy picture. Um, so nice warm welcome to you all. Um, so, oh, and we've got Amy. Um, <laughs> I will stop saying hi in a second hello, hello. and start interacting with you all. Um, so the way we're going to uh, try and run it is I thought we could use a sort of ready for the next reading, poster, whatever. Um, that's Britney Spears. Oh, <laughs> oh what, this one? Yeah, that is. Oh, okay. I didn't know that, Ebony. Not... We've got Claire. Good evening. Good evening. Evening, Claire. Hope you're doing well. Um, okay. Now, let's get cracking. So, yes, so the way we're going to work this evening is last time we did it really um, 
it works really well by asking people to post a particular symbol or a particular emoji or a word or something like that to kickstart that round of a reading. And rather than us then trying to work out who was next and who was first and all of that sort of stuff and who's still watching and who's hung up, um, we decided that we were going to carry on doing that process and work our way through. So we do one person and say, okay, now we're going to ask you to post, um, I don't know, uh, a, a blue star, for example. And then everyone can either post it or write the words or whatever it is. And we can then read that person and, and crack on. Um, okay. So... Um, girls, do you want to introduce yourselves? Do you want to give yourselves a little, because we've got lots of new people. We've got 34 people watching already. We have. Um, so do you want to give, give a little bit of a, an introduction to yourselves, how long you've been doing it, what sort of things you, how, what's your favourite way of working, stuff like that. Who wants to go first? Go on, you can go first, man. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, well, my name's Mandy. Um, I have been training, I suppose you want to call it, um, since last September? October. 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 Um, yep, so we used to meet uh, once a month in Ryan's circle group. Um, and basically we would meet and he would throw us in the deep end generally every week. And we'd all go, no, 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 can't do that, can't do that. And then by the end of it, we could. Um, and um, obviously, sadly, um, COVID hit and uh, we were on lockdown. Um, so really, um, probably about six months worth of meetings, roughly. Um, so we've not been doing this long. Um, but Ryan has a lot of faith in us. He pushes us and pushes us. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before that, um, really interested in ghost hunts, um, and I work with uh, Spectral Knights' sister company, Spectral Hunters, um, and one of their team members, and we go off and we do uh, different ghost hunts in different locations, and um, basically it stemmed from there, and I've always been interested, and um, but here I am now. <laughs> so what what got you interested, Mandy? What was the first thing that that enticed you? Do, do you know um, it's the unknown, really? Uh, not knowing, um, just wondering whether there's anything beyond what the living is here on the Earth plane. Um, but really, it was more the ghost hunts that were intriguing, and that was more to do with um, the history side of things, um, and actually. I was a bit sceptical at first um, and then going along and then you kind of start to feel things and you you start to sort of the emotions take over. And before you know it, um, you're sharing your kind of feelings with everybody else. And then when you get confirmation of that, that's when it started to blow me away, I think. And then that's where I, it's just evolved. I don't think I ever thought into the future I'd be doing anything like this. But that we never do. We never the, do the journey. No. Okay. And uh, Laura, what about you? What got you interested in this? Um. So I've probably been going to centres for about uh, eleven, no, nine years now. Um. Seen various mediums. Um do platform, um, had plenty of readings, and I just was so intrigued on how they do it, how they can connect and things like that, that I started with one pack of angel cards, um, and it's all gone from then. Same how many thing. packs do you have now? Uh, I have now <laughs> had five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've got five and one coming for Christmas as well. <laughs> But we'll have six. <laughs> and, and what got you interested? What what pulled you into a, into a centre or church or whatever it was she was going to? Um, I've always had the feeling that someone's always around me, that I've always got um, a guide as such with me all the time, show me support, um, knowing that they were there all the time. And I think I needed that 
uh, confirmation and going to centres and doing my own cards just gave me that bit of confirmation that I needed and it just grew and grew from there and now I just I like doing it for other people and giving them the comfort and the confirmation that they need and that little bit of boost good okay cool right so naughty at 14 viewers please pray for it <laughs> Austin, we're not we're praying for Trump to get COVID and die no I'm joking I'm joking I'm joking um, <laughs> Sort of. Um, <laughs> My little spice girls. I'm going to just go for a couple of these. Uh, you know, it's more like uh, the spice girls in their guru. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to finish saying hi to a few people and then we'll get started. Yeah. Um, so we've got, I, I was pinging a few people up. So hello to you all. Uh, we've got Kerry. Um, we've got some lovely feedback from last week. Oh, oh thank see you. you all. Uh, it says, I'm now looking into making cards on my new machine. It's something I wanted to do. So oh, that's, that's what I'm reading. Oh, yeah. So that <laughs> okay. Good evening. Okay. So let's get started. Girls, before I ask randomly, um, I should change my name to Charlie, shouldn't I, Heather? Um, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go, Katie. It was Katie who we gave reading to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we thought she disappeared. <laughs> Hi, Jamie. And hello, Kirsty. Okay, that's enough hellos. Let's crack on. Okay, so let's see. Is there anyone you're drawn to to begin with that you would like to like to go to before I, I throw it out and start giving them some uh, some tasks to do? No. Mm -hmm. no? no okay. Them. So if you would like a reading and it's first come, first served on each of these, I'm going to give you a word or symbol to, to write in the comments box, chuck it in there, and we will <laughs> start. Um, connecting with the first person and each time we do a reading we're going to reset it to something different yeah okay so hopefully that makes sense to you all so what i would like being the big bender that i am we'll have a nice rainbow come in there uh, so the <laughs> person to about post the rainbow is the person to get a reading go you're watching and we're going from the posts that are on my screen so that Oh, I know Facebook God sometimes God. throws it out. So, Katie, Katie is first. Ah. Oh. Okay. So, guys, pause your rainbows. We're going to pick Katie and then we'll restart it once we finish with Katie. Okay, got to be fast, guys. Got to be fast. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So, what are you feeling, guys? So, I'm feeling with you, Katie, that your very your life at the moment is very hectic. Um, I feel that you're not taking enough time out for yourself. Um, the reason why I get this, by the way, I got this card. You'll have to bear with us because we're trying to get used to the cameras, which is rest and rejuvenation. And I just feel at the moment your life, both in personal and in work, I find it very overpowering, very feeling like you're swallowed up at the moment. Um, I'm beginning to think as well that you need to really take time out for you. And I know it's hard at the moment with lockdown and not being able to get out and maybe socialise with friends and family. But even having that time in nature, going out for walks and just taking that deep breath and just gathering your thoughts for a moment and thinking right let's prioritize what I need to do first let's organize myself and once I think you start doing that then you'll slow down a lot better and work-life balance will come for you let's make sure she's awake hold on <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't go anywhere 
Don't go anywhere this week. Uh, oh, for sake. Right, Sam, you want to go first? Yes. Okay. Yes, and I've just got the card solitude as well. So that just all links in together and you need to take that time um, and take it out for yourself. But definitely once you get that work-life balance for yourself and start to all, I feel like, I feel like as well there's organisation, Need your life needs organising a bit more. And once you get that, then it will all smooth out for you. Mand? Um, yeah, oh, hold on, I'll keep moving. Um, yeah, I just get the fact that um, she's kind of a bit anxious, uh, uh, quite rightly so at the minute, but just this feeling of, not quite sure which choices to make. Are they going to be the right choices? Um, but you do, and success is coming your way, and those choices are coming. And you've almost you're you're not remembering that all the happy times. You're kind of stuck. I feel in like a in this sort of like a heavy cloud almost. Um, but if you remember all the past times and the, and the happier times, they're going to come again. Um, and it's about making those right choices. And they will make the right choices. You just need to remember, the po try and think positively. I know it's hard to do because that's what I'm feeling is that this, anxious, this anxiousness is coming up and it's almost consuming you. Um, but remember happier times. And I think when you remember those happier times, that will link into um you becoming more successful making that being able to make those choices um and i think i don't think it's just to do with work i think it's kind of in everything that you're looking at at the moment mm -hmm. um and i think that it's having a knock-on effect so mm -hmm. it's if you're not making choices at work that's kind of having a knock-on effect to your home and your balance and your kind of your mm -hmm. own mental well-being so i think it's about trying to make those choices not letting that consume it almost taking time for yourself like laura said it's about finding what makes you happy um so that might be going out for a walk that might be kind of you know whatever it is you need to focus on you in order to be able to make those choices and then you'll be less confused because you'll be remembering those happier times if that makes sense okay so hopefully you can understand that katie now as i connect with you katie um, I'm very aware of uh, a change within your. I'm off the camera. Of, I'm very aware of a change within your sleep pattern. I feel as though you're um, becoming very, very restless. I want to go to your legs as well. So don't even think you're getting like restless leg syndrome or something like this. But there's this real fidgetiness where you've got a lot mm. of energy, and I feel like you just need to burn that off because it's uh, having that impact upon your mental health, but mostly on your sleep as well. Um, I also feel as though, um, as I connect with you, um, I don't know if there's something here, because um, just as I connect with your energy, my, my tummy is turning, flipping uh, around uh, with me. And it, that I normally get that when there's like that level of anxiety and stress. Yeah. But we, like we picked up there on um some choices around um um what's coming up for you and i feel how funny so i've just shuffled my cards and literally the first one that came out was this good night's good sleep see that good, night's, good sleep. night's sleep um which was the first card so it says on here Dear Archangel Raphael, so Archangel Raphael is the angel of healing. Uh, thank you for helping me relax and sleep deeply. For I know that you're guiding, healing and protecting me while I rest. Now, for me, I'm very much drawn there to the sleep aspect, which is what I was talking about before I pulled the card. So the cards need to catch up with me for a moment. Um, and as I said before, I feel as though you're turning things over in the evening. Um I do see that your path is going to be changing quite dramatically. I feel within the ne next uh, six months, you're going to be in a very different situation. Now, obviously, I'm not a fortune teller. 
that those things are only going to change if you want them to change. You know, if you, if you decide to go and hibernate for six months, actually nothing's going to change. But I feel as though this is very much open and available to you. But it's about taking those steps and being brave enough to take those steps and move forward. Um, yeah, I also have a gentleman that draws close with me. Um, he makes I've my chair feel. Well. Pardon? Mm. I think I have someone with me as well, but I've got some, a pain in my chest. Okay, so possibly the same person. Let's have a look. So I have a gentleman that draws close to you, KT. He feels like his granddad uh, and takes me to mum's side of the family there. He makes me feel as though my chest becomes very, very tight. He makes me feel as though he would be a... Um, he's got quite a round face as he connects here and he's got grey hair too. Um, and I feel like... He would probably be in his um, late 70s, early 80s when he passes to the spirit world. Um, I may be wrong on the relationship on the side of the family because uh, um, it was more of a feeling than anything else. Um, and I know that as he comes close to me, there would have been hospital conditions around him before he passes. I know that I've got treatment for this tightness in my chest. I know it isn't like a, a heart attack where I suddenly pass. It makes me feel as like I'm getting medication. I've got treatment. I've been looked after for it. But I know that that's come too late. He really wants to emphasise uh, that he, I'm okay now, that I'm absolutely fine. Now, he, you say you've got great granddad, but he makes me feel as though there's this closeness there. I don't feel like, for me, my great grandparents are quite distant. He makes me feel as though he's in very much in your life and very much part of your life. Um, and... <clears throat> yeah and there's a huge like love connection coming through here so i know there's not that distance i know that he wants to talk about you and i know there's another female that he wants to connect with as well who has also been suffering with this anxiety and stress recently um feeling as though they're not sure what way their path is taking them feeling a little bit lost the pair of you feel a little bit lost at the moment There you go. Okay, Mandy, what are you feeling with him? Do you feel it's the same person? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I had mum's side. Um, I knew it was, yeah, I had a man and I, it was leaning towards mum's side. I was asking him. But I've also got a pain in my head down my right side. So I don't know if he kind of feel like it's all connected. So something to do with his right side of his brain. So I don't know if he had a fall. So possibly a stroke or a fall or something yeah. like that something like that so i'm not sure but the tightness in the chest was the fir first thing that came to me felt like he was quite a portly man once said he was um like it was a nice build nice cuddly build not a not um a skinny man um quite gentle really but okay. very smart man that's what I would have said. Yeah. And why do you feel he's come through um, this evening? Um, it's more for the connection for being close. I feel like it's uh, protective. Talking about connection and hers goes. <laughs> I know, isn't it? <laughs> Nora, you feel anything while we're waiting for Mandy to load back up? See, uh, when you say and why you think he's come through, I'm just getting this feeling that it's the guidance side. It's just the, the supportive side that I feel that she doesn't, like she just needs to know that someone else is there supporting her as well. I just get that feeling that it's just that support and guidance wise. Um, I did have the letter E, but I don't know where that comes. I don't. I don't feel that it's his initial. I do feel that it's a female's initial um, to KT, whether it was his wife or something like that. But I get the E initial that was coming through. So whether KT can look that up. Okay. Now, while we wait for Mandy, give us another symbol. So, Katie, hopefully you can understand all of that and, and take that, that message that your granddad um, is very much around you, very much there giving you that support and upliftment, guiding you through these decisions that are going on at the moment. 
and giving you that little bit of clarity, giving you that little bit of reassurance that everything's going to be all right. Um, oh, clicking away. <laughs> okay. So, Mandy's ditched us. Yeah, I don't know where she's gone. She needs to go in another room in the uh, house so the connection gets there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Laura, pick us a symbol. Let's go for... Mm, let's go for... As it's fireworks, there should be a fireworks one. Okay, symbol. something that resembles fireworks. Yeah, something that resembles fireworks. Let's go for that. I feel a bit of sparkle in my life. So, Fee, if that connects with you, if you can resonate with that message, then uh, that's fantastic. Go with that, yeah? Take what you can from it. So, hold on. So, Katie. Katie Win uh, Writer Chapman. Okay, Katie guys. Yeah, you stop, stop your fireworks. Um and okay, you can begin. See what you get for yeah. right. I'm actually going to swap my cards for you, Katie. I'm gonna use a different pack. Uh, and just out of curiosity, why would you switch a pack with somebody just so that we can uh, educate? Austin, you wasn't first. <laughs> um, I just feel sometimes that it can I wouldn't want it to be repetitive. Some of the cards resemble different things. I just feel for Katie now, me personally, I just feel the angel cards, I, I feel with Katie needs more guidance and support with her. Um, I just feel that, yeah, I there's something different rather than from I, I was using my psychic tarot cards prior to this um, on the other one. I just feel that need more calmness for this one. I just feel that, yeah, I just needed to get the angel cards. So I'm using the Archangel Oracle cards that okay. I've got. Yeah, Fine. while we're shuffling, Fine. I'm going to reassure people of the order that yeah. these came out at. So it was Katie, then Austin, then Nicola, then Laura, then Sue, and then Emily. So please uh, bear that in mind that I am being very honest. I will not um, <laughs> lie to you guys. I don't mind if people type here. I don't mind if people... Take a photo and post it. I don't care. Um, but, yeah, that was the order. So uh, we will make it as fair as possible. Okay, how are you feeling with this? So I've picked a couple of cards out for you, Katie. Um, and the first one that I got was a leadership one. I, th I, feel, I don't feel that this is to work. I just think that you – there's – you need to take more of a lead in situation. There's, there seems to be a situation around yourself at the moment um, that I think you need to. I feel that my throat's getting really croaky at the mo moment, and I feel that there's something that you need to take a voice on and that you need to take that lead on. There's a situation around you. I do feel it is mainly to do with work i feel that there is something that you need to say um or voice your opinion on but i do feel that you're slightly holding back a bit and i just feel that you need to take a lead a bit more in this situation and this is where this one comes into angel therapy and it says at the bottom, give your cares and worries to the angels and allow us to take your burdens. And for me, with this situation that you need to voice your opinion on, you're holding it back because of those worries. You're afraid to upset someone or you're afraid that no one will take your views on board. But I feel that you need to do this and you need to ensure that as well, take and Think about that there are people surrounding you that are guiding you, that are supporting you, that 
sitting back in behind you slightly it it may be i do feel i may be rambling but i do feel that there is a lady with you i feel dad's side of the family that is always with you um and you need to take that on board um is it lady on the earth plane or in the spirit world i feel that she's a, a spirit world Okay. I feel that it's dad side. Ma, I feel ma, like nan to her on dad side. I feel in my left arm. I've got it's like tender and pain, and in my down my left side. So I don't know whether possibly. A fall that may be hospitalized i just feel i don't feel it's chest i don't feel i'm struggling to breathe i do feel pain so whether there was um an injury that caused her to go into hospital um i do feel that with this lady just trying to get a little bit more. So you will have to bear with me. Okay. And Katie, does any of this make sense to you? Um, just so, so, so we know that you're paying attention, not sleep. My, my <laughs> name. Are you there? Sorry, oh, she crashed. <laughs> That's fine. Katie, we're just talking about a lady in the spirit world who takes us to um, which side of the family? Mums? Dad. Dad's Dad. side Dad. of the family. Uh, we were feeling as though she perhaps had a tumble before uh, she passes. Um, we were um, Laura was feeling quite a lot of discomfort around um, her arm and shoulder. shoulder. Um, she didn't feel as though this was connected to like a chest condition. Um, she felt more as though there was some sort of um, trip or fall and then mm. had to be hospitalised because of the pain or discomfort there. Um, she also was saying that your... Um, um, I've forgotten. Only have I feel that there's a situation that she needs to take control of. She needs to voice her opinion. She's got an opinion on... Uh, a situation and you need to take control of that um you need to you need to know that there are people in the spirit world that do support you there's also people on the earth plane that are sitting back but they are also supporting you and re rooting for you to voice your opinions on this whatever this situation is i do feel it's to do with work um, that I, I feel that you need to voice your opinions and it will benefit you and it will help you to progress or to move forward on a situation. But I feel if you don't, this will hold you back. So you, the situation. But I do feel with this woman that she is dad's side. I do feel, like I said, my shoulder. I don't feel that she was what we call a little nan or something like that. I'd say she was probably five, about five, four, five, five. So about normal height. I don't feel extremely old with her, like 80s or anything like that. I feel, if anything, around about 70s. So I personally wouldn't say that's old, old. I'd say around 70. Was this? Uh... I'm just going to put us an old message on so that um, Mandy can see who we're talking to. I 
Okay. Yeah. Let me have a little look for you, Laura, and I'll help you out here. Okay. So Sorry, that's all right. Don't panic. <laughs> so knows what make you the medium. So if I connect back to this person, um, I do feel as though we've got your your great nan here who was talking um, about. Um, sorry, who was talking about her daughter. I feel like I want to say that your nan has been more recently having some health concerns at the moment. And a lot of what Laura just described, described um, your nan. Nan the on the earth flag. Yeah. And actually her mum is the person who's connecting, giving that description. Uh -huh. say, I want to talk about my daughter. I want to connect here and I want to connect because I feel as though there's a vulnerability um, around her at the moment. Now, if you can understand this on your wife's side, wonderful. However, I don't feel personally that's the case. I feel as though we're talking about your great nan is talking about her daughter who is here. And I feel as though there's a level of distance between you and your nan at the moment. And there's concern going out to her because I feel as though there's... Oh. Okay, that's where we go in. <laughs> okay so oh. that's yeah that's where we're going that your your great nan is talking about your nan is sending her love to her daughter and i feel like your great nan would very very much be that type of person that wouldn't talk about themselves that wouldn't would come in and ask straight away how are you doing what's you know do you want some food do you want this do you want that and it's very much a feeder um as well as um, the sort of person who who wants to take care and nurture everybody, yeah. Um, and she's still like that now. She's still got this caring, nurturing aspect that she's bringing forward. My chair is making so many squeaky noises as every time I move. <laughs> um, yeah. So your nan hasn't changed at all, but she's she's particularly thinking about her daughter at the moment. I do feel as though there must also be. Um, your nan must have a sister, so that would be your great aunt. Um, and I know that there's so I know that there's, there's not just her in this equation. I want to talk about um, some other people that would connect to that as well. Um, but she's she's very much there, connecting and sending her, her love to her um, to her daughter, um, particularly. I feel like there's massive help, uh, like healing being sent from from your great nan to your nan. Okay. So did you want to carry on there, Laura? Because you was up, you was right, and everything was right. <laughs> but just yeah, she wasn't talking about herself there. She was talking about her her daughter. Yeah, no, I can't. Can't get back into that now. No. Okay. Yeah. So that would make sense. So know that although Katie, know that although that you can't see her, her mum can. And her mum is coming forward to say, Hey, I'm looking after my little girl. I'm looking after my baby girl. And she calls you baby girl as well. So I don't know if you're like the baby girl in the family, or there's something like this that, that comes through there. Um, she does she keeps making me gasp here. And I know that as as I get this, I know that there's thoughts about um her needing some sort of oxygen or something like this before she passes and i feel very much like i'm in hospital or something like this as i connect with her um but i know she doesn't like the fuss of it all she likes um uh the 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 independence that she would have had when she was well and i know your nan is very much like this too and so she likes that independence she likes to be able to stand on her own two feet however i know that her two feet are hurting her at the moment your nan's sending a little bit of healing there for that um yeah, so really, you're going to have to be a bit of a, a postwoman there, Katie, um, because I feel it's really important that your, your nan knows that her mum's looking after her, that her mum still loves her. And I feel like your nan talks to your great nan, talks to her mum um, still now, and she wants to acknowledge that, that she's heard that and she's around her. Um, I think that's really important that she knows that she's, A, not going to do lally, but B, that she's also um, sending her love to her daughter um there 
Okay, Mandy, anything there? I know you came in at the tail end of, of that. No, nothing for me at the minute. I'm just trying to concentrate on the name, but yeah, nothing come through for me at the minute. There you go. Um, okay, so Katie, please take that um, as confirmation that your nan is very much being looked after there. So thanks for letting us connect with such a beautiful lady. Her energy is stunning. She's got a real caring gentleness to her. Um, and as I'm talking about her, she's making me go all tingly and cold. So I know that she's excited about the fact that she's been acknowledged uh, for her uh, daughter. Okay. Lovely. So, Mandy, you're going to go first this time. Who, no, who, give us a sim. Oh, did you pick the last sim? No. No. I, I she went. She went. Technical issues. Yeah. I keep disappearing off the screen. Oh, I know. It's really up, up, whatever way I move, I think I'm going the right way. And then I'm like, no. Um... <laughs> Give us a symbol. Give them something to post. We've had fireworks. Um, uh, and we've had um, a rainbow because I'm a bender. Purple love heart. A purple love heart. Yeah, come on then. Let's have a purple love heart. <laughs> you know you love purple. Who's that out there? It's, it used to be my favourite colour. Oh. oh, and we got Michelle Galliano. Okay. Okay, so pull your purple love arts, guys. Oh. Oh, my cards just shot everywhere. So, so Mandy, you're going to go first this time. Yes, I'm going to go. Uh -oh. Okay. Yeah. I am going to go with Ten of Wands. Um, so I've picked out the Ten of Wands, uh, the Eight of Cups, and the Ace of Pentacles. I don't know if you can see there. And um, for you, it is just about um, accepting what you cannot control. So accepting that there are situations, a situation around you now, personal situation that you feel kind of out of control in. Um, but there's nothing you can do to control this situation. I don't feel it surrounding what's going on in the world at the moment, um, but it's actually a personal um, condition to you, a situation to you. Um, uh, closely linked with family. Um, I can feel kind of your, it's making you quite angry. Whatever it is that the situation is, it's making you quite angry because you can't control it. It's, that's taken out of your hands and there's nothing you can do. Um, and the situation will become clear, um, but you've got to take care of yourself. You've almost got to distance yourself from it. You can't control it. So you've got to distance yourself and look after number one, because that's the most important thing, um, because it will resolve it. Um, but you can't do that. The people, it's almost, it's to do with two other people and they have to deal with that situation. They have to make, they have to sort it out between them because you can't control it. I hope that makes sense. And there's a bit of a delay. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that, you know, she was quite a um, caring person in general. And I think that she wants to help. She's trying to help in this situation, but she it really is beyond her control when she can't. She's got to she's got to look after herself. This is the situation I'm getting. I don't know if you can take it. I feel like it's family. That's what I feel like it's linked to. So I'm I'm not sure you like I say it's uh, it's it's to do with family it's a personal situation okay. um yeah I think it's it, it's not actually your fight not your situation 
it's theirs, but you're kind of being dragged into that. Um, and you're trying to help, but actually it's beyond your control. There's nothing that you can actually do. And I feel like maybe you're being pulled into something that you don't want to be pulled into. And you need to resist that, resist being pulled into it and kind of remaining really focused on you and not about them because reminding them that you love them all but you need to make sure that you're looking after you so that you don't get pulled in I hope that makes a bit of sense and I hope you can work that out but that's what I'm getting from that that's the feelings I'm getting okay Nora sorry I went off in the day <laughs> where were you going sorry. in the day no, I just, I was just sitting here and just sort of looking at the picture that there's there and things like that. And I get the feeling that there is um, a gentleman that comes around her. I feel, see, I'm not sure if it's dad or granddad, though. That's the only thing. I get a father figure that surrounds her um mm. i get the initial b around this lady and i'm getting october early october sort of around the 4th and 5th of october i don't know if this makes sense at all with you michelle i feel like it's a tall gentleman very well dressed well kept loved to get his hands dirty however i do feel like he did look after himself he like he did have like a sunday best sort of look about him but he liked to get his hands dirty as you're talking laura i don't know if that's this is a gentleman but i'm getting a um a tightness but in my lungs almost like a respiratory type illness not my heart it's my chest so it's that underneath my rib cage that sort of area or like pneumonia or something like, on the lungs like, yeah dark haired man he would have been don't know if that's what you've got laura Mm. It was a dark haired man. Um, yeah, quite tall. Quite a tall gentleman. Yeah, dark haired. Michelle, I may be wrong with the actual specific date, but I know it's it's the beginning of October, but I do feel like it's right around that area. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, no, definitely. But like I say, it may be a passing anniversary or a birthday. So it's not just one, could be either one of those. But I feel like he's coming in, surrounding that reading that I get, that I give. It's like he's coming in to say, you know, like he knows. You just, he's kind of saying, you just, You've got to let them get on with it. Okay. And as I just join that connection there and I, I move into that space where um, this gentleman is, um, as this man draws close to me, he does make me want to, to smart myself up. He does make me feel as though also there's a lot of responsibility that sits on your on your shoulders at the moment and he says to me and i feel as though some of this is relating to your mum and he says to me that there's a quite a lot of care that's involved here and one way or another i don't necessarily mean you know um health care but i feel like that support that care that's coming in um feels quite significant here i feel as though there's a lot of effort and a lot of time that's being given to your to your mum and I feel as though there's an, almost like a, a thank you because I know that he would want to do this uh, for her. And obviously he's not able to do that in the physical sense. However, he's doing that in the spirit side. Um, and I feel also with this man, um, 
I do feel October, but I also feel December and I also feel January is really important here. Um, I feel as though there must also be uh, May as well. Um, and also I know as I connect here with him, I'm very strongly feeling this around my chest. Now, to me, this does feel like some sort of pneumonia or emphysema or something like this that is connecting with me here. And I know that he didn't have uh, his... Although he might have been poorly for a significant amount of time, I feel as though his actual passing, um, I feel as though his actual passing um, has been, um, um, was quite rapid. I feel as though he went downhill very, very quickly. Cool, Laura, that's a, uh, Mandy, that's a big glass there. Cool. <laughs> 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 I've left my wine down there, so. Um, and he makes me feel as though he wants to blow kisses to you. But I feel like I'm standing on my doorstep and I'm giving you a wave and I'm waving until you're all the way out of the street. Um, and I feel like as he does this, there must be a curving, like, um, um, okay. Uh, there we go, girls. Um, and I feel that he... Um, he, he like stands at his doorstep and he's waving and waving and waving and waving until everyone's out of sight. Um, and I know that he wants to give you a big squeeze because he says to me that you're um, feeling a little bit unsettled. You're feeling as though you're not quite sure what weighs up at the moment. Um, and I feel like there must be also changes going on around the work situation. As I draw a card, um, I feel, yeah, it's, it just, this card is all about asking for help. Yeah. Um, and I feel like this is something that you struggle with. But I know that your dad um, is very much around you and has heard you talking to him. Now, I also know there must be something here to do with DIY or to do with, like, um, maintenance of some sort. Your dad feels to me as though, although he wasn't always necessarily the, the, the quickest at doing this, um, he... he um, makes me feel as though he liked to spend that time together and uh, not together. I've just read that message. He likes to spend <laughs> <I know. laughs> in the head. Um, he liked to he um, spend that time looking after and, and helping people. That support is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm off the camera. Oh, is he gone? <laughs> no, he's gone. No. <laughs> Where are you? Oh dear. Ryan. Sorry, guys. I don't He's... know if we're on because can you still hear us? My wife has died. <laughs> oh, I know. It's down to us now, isn't it? No! Ryan, where are you? Oh, look, oh my God. <laughs> it is an unfortunate autocorrect. You are right. <laughs> oh, God. By the way, he hasn't got a wife, in case you hadn't guessed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, okay. Um, oh, that's good. At least everyone can still hear us. I don't know where he's gone. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Right, can still you hear you, though. It's saying keep going. You better come back. Okay. Home. So, <laughs> what should we go for? What what um what emoji should we go for? Let's go. Card? Did you miss me? <laughs> oh <laughs> thank God! We was just about to go, just to, about to go for a crying emoji. I get up, my poor wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god, that was the best. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh dear. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Oh. So what what happened while I was gone? Um, <laughs> nothing. We were asking oh, for no. you and praying for you to come back. Oh, who was the first crying emoji? That was who we were going to. You were. Oh, is that what he was doing? Yeah. It was. I don't know who was laughing at me and who was crying. <sighs> I'm crying. Wife died. Is that one of the ones? Yasmin's? I don't know oh, when. You... Ebony? Oh, I think it might be Fee Morgan. There's this one. Mm, at oh, yeah. 848. Oh, yeah. It could be. It could be Ebony. Ebony. I don't know how long ago I died. Oh, or when you said it. You said keep oh. going. Was it after I'd said keep going that you said it? Yeah. yeah. That would so be Nicola then. The Nicola? others must be just be laughing ones, like laughing that he died on us. No, that's a laughing one you put on, Nicola. It was Ebony, I think. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Kerry reckoned you set us up, by the way. So it was Ebony. There you go, Ebony. <laughs> um, My poor wife. Your poor wife. Oh, someone coming in because I keep wanting to cough. So I don't know if it's the surrounding um, Ebony, <sighs> but I want to cough. Okay. <coughs> it was Ebony. Let's go. Yeah. Ebony. <sighs> Definitely Ebony. Yeah. Um, yeah. I get someone coming in. I'm not sure who yet. Um, but they really make me want to cough. Um, and I'm sure I've got a shortness of breath. Um, oh, like real shortness of breath. Yeah. While you two are doing that, I'm just going to quickly run downstairs and grab myself a pint of water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wine. Oh, I Can I just say, know. while you're trying to connect with whoever yeah. it is, I just feel around you at the moment, Ebony, Ebony sorry, I, I feel that there's a lot of studying and knowledge going on. Um, I feel that there is either university or home studying that's going on to uh, prog progress in um your work situation at the moment and because i get the cards that I've, i pulled for you is um wisdom and i just feel like so much knowledge and absorbent uh, absorbing of the knowledge at the moment and but this studying has been a long time coming i feel that you've been wanting to do it and eventually has just taken that leap of faith and started to study. If this is not happening now, I feel that it's going to happen. That's how I feel. I feel that it's that swaying at the moment. So if it's not happening now, I do feel within six months or so that there is um, a situation that you will be studying, gaining more knowledge and progression. Um, through this and this is going to be a positive forward movement for you and it's going to help you um to get where you actually want because i feel at the moment you're not quite there but i feel that this is going to be a positive way yeah i do feel that you need to take that leap of faith and you need to take that because it will open up a lot more doors for you by doing this, because I feel that it's going to move you in different places and move you to different paths that you can go down and give you more choices and more variety by doing this. So you need to definitely do that and follow that, because it is going to be positive for you. Mand, have you got who you need? Uh, I think so. I think it's a man. Um, I'm not sure on which side yet, um, but he's really making me cough. So I feel like it would have been some sort of COPD that he had, like um, emphysema type disease. Um, I've got a real shortness of breath with him and then I get a stabbing pain in what would be my chest as well. 
um i feel uh, it's a close connection so i feel like it's a protective that's what the kind of feeling is like a protective shroud around ebony um i feel like a yeah i, I don't feel i feel like this is a granddad Yeah, I don't know. Could be. I could be slightly off, but I feel like it's a granddad. I feel like this real sort of... That's what he's bringing through to me, like his... That chest and I'm getting all the breathing and then, like I say, a sh stabbing pain in my side. But I feel like he's here as a protective... Like almost a protective, like shrouding you. He wants to give you a squeeze, wants to give you a hug. So that's why I'm leaning to more like a granddad side. I'm not sure if it's even granddad or great granddad. It's that sort of line. Um, I don't feel like it's a cousin from what I'm feeling. Um, it's coming through a bit more now. It was quite a relaxed kind of man. So the way, the, the way I get it is like um, relaxed trousers, you know, like not a... That's why I don't feel it's like a young man. Um, he's coming through. He would have worn like your, your shirt, but it was a casual shirt. It wasn't like your Sunday best sort of stuff. Um, quite relaxed looking. I'd say he's quite a rounded man. Um, roundish face, glasses. Almost like a darkening of the hair. Um... Yeah, definitely. So I would say granddad. I could be wrong on that, but that's how it feels. That's how it's coming through to me. Um, almost like he would. I'd, I'd say it was probably great granddad. I don't know if I. I don't feel like this is a granddad died of heart disease. Like I said, I got a stabbing pain in my heart. So whether that was the culmination of it, but I still think this person had breathing difficulties, unless I've got two coming through, because I've got the chest. But I still feel like it's a great granddad. Granddad. So Sue, is this your granddad or is this Ebony's granddad? Ebony, Sue is, oh, I believe, okay. Ebony's um, mum. All oh, right. So it must be granddad. Yeah. Because great granddad died of prostate cancer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, definitely who I'm getting coming so through. You're feeling, I feel granddad. I feel as though, again, still we've got this heart condition. Yeah. I feel as though there's a, a straightforwardness with this man. No yeah. nonsense, no... Yeah, that's I would good. say so, when he spoke to you, it would be like, you know, almost over the top of his glasses if he wore them or that sort of look. Yeah, intense and, and sort of like, very into. I'm not believing it. I'm not having it. <laughs> that sort okay. of thing. And is there a message that would come through from him? It's more of a, a love kind of thing. And all, uh, like, it's something to do with like, that straightforwardness. Let me see what's coming through. I kind of feel I don't know is there a decision to be made that like, I'm not sure that they're commit she's committing to something and it's almost like come on now let's make that decision come on commit to it and let's go with it yeah get your finger out come on let's get on let's get on but it comes with a lot of love not a you know a telling off like come on let's get on with it Stop dilly dallying and get on with it almost. Make that decision. And I almost want to do that. Like clap my hands and go, come on, chop, chop, get on, come on, let's make the decision. That's what I feel like. But it's more surrounding Ebony. So it's like an, a message for her. You need to find some clarity, some, come on, commit, commit to it and go with it. Okay, so hopefully, Ebony, you can understand that. Um, 
Okay. Anything else for Ebony? No, just for me, it's this it's surrounding. I know Laura's obviously said about um, about the uh, studying and stuff. I don't feel it's to do with that, but I think that she's got a decision to make, and it's almost like, come on, you, you're kind of oh, maybe I should. Mm, uh, so it's not no decisiveness, and because there's no decisiveness, you you kind of not committing to it. You're kind of stepping back and not making that commitment to it. Okay. If that makes sense. I feel as though it does. So we'll uh, we'll move on. I'm going to pick the next symbol. Um, let's go for yeah that one. Uh, like red diamond. Rolling your eyes emoji. <laughs> no. red, red, diamond. Diamond. red diamond. Red diamond. Red diamond. <sighs> Oh, that's not like you, Ebony. You're so headstrong. <laughs> I'm assuming that's like a bit tongue in cheek. <laughs> Hi, Katie. Welcome along. Hi. Oh. Sue. So, <laughs> although the others look black to me, but Sue, so, let's let's. I think we can probably. Um, just carry on with if see if there's anything there for Sue from this gentleman, um, because they're related, and then we could maybe pull a few cards for Sue there too. Yeah, let's pull it. Go on, Lloyd, do you want to go? No, you can carry on. Okay. Um, see, this gentleman stepped back from me now. Okay. At the moment, but he came through straight away when I said about uh, Ebony. Uh, uh, <laughs> the decision is whether to get out of bed in the morning or not. <laughs> so, um, so he stepped back. Oh, what's he talking about? Mm, moment. Oh, I feel uh, that Sue. Um, yeah, is not treating herself with a lot of love. She's not giving herself, she's not getting a lot of love at the moment. Oh gosh. That's what I've got. Two of cups. Not being kind to yourself. Um, I kind of think that you've had a bit of a round of bad luck. And you're kind of thinking, oh, well, I'm obviously not, I'm not deserving of anything. I'm not, I'm not deserving of what, of any good, almost. Um, but you really are. I think you've got a kind, caring, real kind and caring side of you. Um, it makes you a really loyal person and you're loyal to everybody and you're caring to everybody. But you, I think like you've been dealt a bit of a bad blow over the last maybe three years. Don't think it's all been going quite plain sailing. Um, and I don't feel like kind of maybe what you're giving out, you're getting in return. Um, it's kind of putting a bit of a dampener on things for you sometimes that you kind of just like, oh, yeah, I suppose that that's going to happen. And maybe sometimes thinking of the worst case scenario rather than the positive, if that makes a bit more sense. Um, but actually, you are deserving of a bit of love and respect and a bit of, you know, something back from other people. And I think that you've kind of got to look into that of looking after yourself and kind of making choices that empower you and kind of lift you up and make you feel worthy and really start doing things for you. And as well as kind of giving that, because you won't be able to give any more of yourself to anybody else unless you're giving that time to you. Um, so yeah, it's about kind of actually thinking that you are deserving of things, even if you're having a bit of a run of bad luck, which I think maybe over the past three years or so, I would have said that maybe you haven't had the best run of things and that actually it is going to get better. Um, and the choices you make are going to be good choices. Um, and actually in return, you're going to get those things back. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, that, to be honest, man, that links with like the three cards that I've just pulled out for so 
Um, I had the one that love begins and I do feel that that needs to begin with you first rather than everyone else all of the time. Um, and I do feel that once you start to love yourself, then everything else comes. Because I do feel that there have been challenges put in your way, obstacles put in your way. And every time you feel that you've got over those ones, then you start to look at yourself you then get another set of obstacles and challenges and everything that comes in front of you. And that's what's making it harder for you to do. But I do feel at the end of this, um, once you do start, then you will start to be able to enjoy yourself. Um, and even I feel getting out more, obviously, and I know that's hard, that's hard for me to say at the moment. Um, but I do feel that you need to, get out more you need to do things that you enjoy and not just go in yeah let's do this because everyone will enjoy that you need to do it for you and i do feel like that but can yeah. i ask sorry can i ask um so uh, it was your dad wasn't it um can i ask did he have a problem with his hearing i don't know if you can answer that why'd you say that mandy uh, because I've got a problem, because I was go gone kind of deaf in my, well, would be my left side, but I'm not sure whether that's their right side. Okay. Um, so I kind of, when we were talking, it just went just on this side, which is why I'm asking whether I've got someone with me, which I think it could still be the dad, because I'm getting the chest pain again. So I don't know if it's dad again. Ah, okay, so it's hard of hearing, yeah. So he has come back in. Um yeah but this is going to sound so i've not got the chest pain but i kind of have this love honestly he's sending love to you because my heart had my heart could just burst so i don't know if that makes sense to you that like he is he he could not be any prouder of you and actually he feels quite i can feel emotion coming around that because i kind of feel like come on girl you know like you you've got to start loving yourself like like we love you, you've got to start seeing that. And honestly, my my chest at the moment, and this isn't pain, this is just a swelling of love for you and just sending that love to you. Um, just honestly, it could not, I can't get over it. It's, uh, it's like a, a, a massive hug. If he could hug you right now, he would do. Mm-hmm. I feel like as well, he's telling, like he's saying that you, he's with you. You don't feel like it, but he is with you. And he also hears you talking. But yeah, this just a whole lot of love. Definitely. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else can pick up. Oh, I'm hoping I've not just blocked Sue. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's okay. I've blocked right. if a Rodi, if a CEO. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I've blocked him, I think. Oh, okay. Um, It's okay. I, I hope, Sue, so that was okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. no. Oh, well, don't cry, Kill. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. Okay. Should we do another? Let's yeah, do another. go on then. Let's do another. Okay, who's going? Who's picking? Oh, actually, Sue, really quickly, I'm just going to go through the cards that I, I drew out for you. Oh. So, two. Um, I'm not going to go too much into it. This one's about increased energy. This tells me that you've been feeling really flat and really sort of out of out of kilter. Uh, that's not even the right word, is it? Um, whatever the word is, out of salt. Um, this tells me also um, that you... 
Um, yeah, you've just been trying to feel from an empty cup. You've tried, been trying to support everybody else, but you need to look after you for a little while. And also that your body is trying to give you messages here, that you're you're getting aches and pains and you're getting um, messages from your body about relax, chill out, take time off, enjoy yourself. But it's, you need to take notice of those messages that are being given um, because, you know, your, your, your body is telling you stop. Take some time for yourself and rest. Um, and I know that's easier said than done because I feel as though people rely on you to be that provider for them and to, to guide and to um, shape people's path. But I feel as though it's really important that, you know, you do start to look after yourself a little bit more. That were just the two quick cards. See, I like this. I can leave all the work to you, too. I'm just sit back, and, <laughs> sit back and eat me a bite. Was it one of you? That's not too well. Yeah, I lost a pound this week, guys. I lost a pound. You put it back on next week. I've got a million pound. Okay, let's, um, I keep doing that. Sorry, guys, who's listening on headphones. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, um, I've got math for a cake now. Can that teach you? <sighs> Nice and healthy water and then cake. Um, okay, so let's... Do you want to pick a symbol? Present. Oh, it's coming to Christmas. Let's have a present. I'm your gift. Gift that keeps on giving. Always <laughs> Gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> I'm just laughing at Kelly's. Oh, not Kelly's. Hold on, the first person. Oh, look who it is. The first person was Kerry. There's a mole queen. All right. Come on in, Kerry. Ooh. No pressure. No, not much. Go on then, man. You can go first. <laughs> Evil. I'm sure I went first last time. No. <laughs> yeah, you disappeared, though. Just putting it out there. No, I didn't. I was still here. I've disappeared after the first one. Anyway, yeah. right. Kerry, Kerry, Kerry. Okay. Um, I've got things surrounding trust. Um, and I don't think it's it, it's coming out as you trust the present. I don't know. I don't think you do. You're not trusting yourself. You're, you've got, it's like rock bottom. It is, um, you've got no trust in yourself, no belief in yourself. Um, and actually you need to start doing that in order to get things moving and to, you need to try to start moving on as hard as that may be. Um, it just, everything, all the cards I've picked out, I'll show you. Oh, I can. So I've got the Ace of Cups. I've got the Nine of Swords. And I've got this one. The Lovers. I just, there's not a lot of trusting, loving yourself. You're running on empty. Um, and you just need to <coughs> believe in yourself. It's just sadness and just that until you kind of break out through that cloud, because actually, Kevin, you've got to start trusting yourself and believing in yourself because everything is standing still for you at the minute it's not moving on it's not moving on every everybody else around you is moving on and moving 
and you're almost stuck in time and watching everybody go round and round and round and you're just there and you've got to start listening to people around you who love and care for you because they're showing you that love and once you start believing it things are going to get better it's going to take time because this self-doubt and this self you know sort of devaluing yourself has been going on chipped away at constantly it's not been one big thing it is really small things that eventually that have, over the time have just chipped away and chipped away and chipped away and chipped away until you're just you don't know you can't commit to anything you can't see beyond it's just stuck and you're you're in body you're here but out you're not mind you're not and it's such a shame because actually if you listen to everybody around you you'd actually see your self-worth because actually until you can appreciate yourself and love yourself and trust yourself you can't do that to others now i obviously know that you are a carer and the thing is you're caring for other people and i wish you'd put that amount of care into yourself if that makes sense but I also have someone coming through again I've got tightness in my chest I've got yeah real tightness real real tightness in my chest um feel like it's mum um yeah she just feels she just wants to give you a hug yeah sorry uh, this is what she brings through is that she wants to give her a hug and tell her it'll be all right. This is not me crying. This is her crying. So I'm showing you what she's doing to me, what she's bringing through to me. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, she just wants to tell you that it'll be all right. And believe me, this ain't Mandy, because Mandy don't cry. She's heartless. <laughs> no but it's the feeling that she gives me i can't i can only express that's the feelings that i get yeah that's the feelings i get so i'm not upset but i can feel like she just wants to give you a hug because she knows Yeah, but the moral of it is you've got to start, yeah, you've got to start loving yourself, Kerry, because you can't care for other people and continue to care for other people if you can't care for yourself. That makes sense. Okay. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, like I said, look, see, I'm back to normal, but it's just... Well, well you say normal. Well, well normal... Is there anything such? You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's it, that's how I feel. I don't, I feel, it, that's, it's the intensity of it. You know, so that's the intensity that I get. That's what, that's what they bring across. But yeah, that was it. And... Laura, anything you want to um, add? See, I'm going to be honest. I feel too close to Kerry to comment. Okay. Obviously, she's one of my close friends, so I wouldn't feel like I was doing justice if I... But I agree with... I was nodding the whole way through that because I absolutely agree with everything that you said. Yeah. Everything. Completely. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to just add a couple of bits. Um, yeah. The first thing I want you to do was that, well, the, I'm going to go through the cards, to be honest, uh, to begin with. So laughter is the best medicine. I feel as though mm -hmm. you, um, your sparkle has almost not gone out, but you, you've let your sparkle stop shining as much as it could do. And as though you, you very much on the mask and not necessarily the COVID mask, but, you know, the mask that you present yourself to other people in a particular way. But inside that heaviness is still there. Yeah. Just that stepping forward, um, um into your own power again because it feels as though you're you're holding on to to negative hard memories and and hard thoughts about things and thoughts and feelings that make you sad what your mum wants to come through is tell you that she loves you and that she wants to cuddle you again um mm -hmm. she's got this nice big baggy baggy cardigan on and she's come close to me um and almost like she, the pockets are like bulging with tissue and stuff um and I, she, it looks really cozy as well almost like it could wrap right around me and she wants to do that to you at the moment um kerry she wants to to wrap you um in this nice cozy cardi um and uh draw that that energy that love close to you now also what she says to me <coughs> is that when you're um this time of the year is particularly challenging for you as well. So I know that the change of the season causes that heaviness, causes that darkness to, to sort of um, um, descend upon you, where you're you're then um, you're you're surrounding yourself, or you're not able to find any light in the day, if you like. So as the nights become. Um, uh, as the evenings become darker sooner, um, so does your energy levels sort of match that. Uh, and your mum wants to just come forward and shine that light on it and just give you that little bit of upliftment. I can hear in my head um, a song. Um, I'm not, not going to sing, but it's... Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> something about, like, shine... Um, not the... not oh, Who sings it, shine? Um, Take that. Take that so that yeah and it feels to me like there's this this take that connection that's really really strong here and it's almost like i can see you as a kid as well singing in front of the mirror and being just a plonker with with all of this um because she wants to bring that that smile back and she wants to see you as being um mm childlike again she said it's been such a long time since you let your hair down and enjoyed yourself and gave you you time um she says to me that she's seen those tears around you and she sits with you and you felt her on the end of your bed as well there kerry you felt the dip on the end of your bed and you feel her she comes no you smell her when she comes close to you as well um i can smell her and it's almost like this cardigan thing that she wants to put around is still around you now um and yeah what's that and she talks about the photo that you've got of her that sits by the side of your bed and you lay on your pillow i'm laying on my pillow my pretend pillow and you lay on your pillow and you look at her photo um and i know that you talk to her at night and you 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 ask her to come close to you and she's telling me that um two weeks ago you had a really vivid dream about your your mum and she's letting you know that she was coming close to you at that time because she says she was having a particularly challenging um, evening as well or night there. Um, and your mum wants you to know that she's working with you to, to support you through that. Um, OK, um, don't you don't need to imagine that that cuddling. You don't need to imagine that smell. You're feeling that because she's bringing it close to you. She's bringing that around you um, because she's saying that. Um, I don't know what this is about this pink flower as well um, that she's shown me. I don't know if it's like a little pink. It looks like tiny little pink roses, but I'm rubbish with flowers, so it could be a daisy, you know. <laughs> but she showed me these tiny little pink, like, buds or flowers or something. Um, 
And she also says to me, here, go on, um, she wants to just clarify that the dreams are not dreams, they're visitations. She comes to you while you're asleep. She comes close to you and she comes into your mind because that's the only time that you switch off. And she says that she's so proud of how you support other people um, in exactly the same way as you supported her. Um, she says that you treat every single person that you look after as if it could be your mum. And she said, and that makes her so proud. That makes her feel as though she's left a legacy behind for you. And, and seeing the person that you've become is so, so important. Um, Kerry, I am going to leave her love with you, but she does want to see you starting to eat a little bit better as well um, because she said that you've just been eating, eating, eating crap, worrying about uh, what everyone else is eating, worrying about what everyone else is doing, but not actually taking that time for yourself. I'm seeing, like, packet sandwiches all the, like, surrounding me here, but I want to see you eating healthier food, veg, uh, fruit in particular, um, because she says that you ain't doing it. Um, <laughs> and, and that is also having an impact on your health as well she said you're feeling crap because you're putting crap in your body you need to start looking after yourself now um as you know she would have the same nag when she was here in fact she showed me a big shepherd's pie um that she wants to put in front of you a big plate of shepherd's pie um that she would remember cooking for you i don't mind if it's cottage although that's a bit manky um <laughs> Pie, personally um so i'm gonna leave her love with you kerry and uh, yeah. i think you know there's no doubt in in any of our minds how much she loves you and yeah. how how close yeah. she comes to you and for you to know that that dream connection is a connection it isn't just a dream yeah um so yeah we're gonna thank you very very much for allowing us the privilege yeah. of connecting with your beautiful mum yeah Now, quick question. Mm. Why does it say shepherd's pie and not shepherds, as in P and H make a, f no, make a f sound, don't they? Yeah, I don't know. Like Stephen. Yeah. Bit, of a ra <laughs> bit of a random thought there. Because um, it's is it a compound word, so it's two words put together. <laughs> there you go. Shepherds. I suppose he herds, didn't he? Shep herds. herds. The sheep. Yeah. Herds. Shep herds. There we go. Okay. <laughs> you tell me all work in schools. <laughs> oh, kid Oh, uh, dear. Oh. Guys, oh. people that haven't got um, a reading this evening, please do not worry. We are going to try and do this as often as we can during lockdown <laughs> he says <laughs> I'm trying to work out how yeah. we can put a donate button here yeah. um because i like this new format but what we really want to do is be able to carry on supporting our charities yeah. obviously we have spectral nights not being able to open um charities are really really important to us and being able to support as many people as possible is really important to us so eventually there will be a link of some sort um in fact i may put oh no that won't work um so i need to just work it out so mm -hmm. yeah okie doc where should we go next what should we do next can I just point out, guys, these two have only <laughs> been developing properly for about six, well, six sessions. So we start at what? 7.30, 8 o'clock? Yeah. Once we get in, 8, 8, 8, 8 till 10. So they've done 12 hours of training. <laughs> 12 hours of training. And this is the evidence that they're putting out there, guys. Um absolutely phenomenal Cried like a baby and everything. <laughs> <laughs> once we are allowed to meet up again i will be doing some more some workshops and some some um training sessions for people um so that you can also connect um and you know connect with the spirit world and, and join with us um but you know absolutely amazing evidence um and connections here 
Okay, so well done, girls. Well done. Okay. okay. Should we have a symbol? Should we have a a, a, a thing of some sort? Well, we had a star. Hmm. Right? A star. Yeah. Let's go with star. Hi, everyone. <laughs> star. Any particular colour star before we start getting them all? No. Yellow? Just no, just, just a star. Oh, we got Paige. Paige. Hello. Okay. Paige, she was on it like a car bonnet. It was. <laughs> oh. Guys, just before I forget, because you know what I'm like. Um, so over lockdown, we were supporting K9 Rescue Remedy, uh, which is a, a dog charity. And we're putting all these posts up and we're doing our live feeds. People were donating. Um, and for Christmas, they're actually organising a charity um, dog uh, competition um, where... The you're able to post pictures of your dog onto their pages and do um under different categories and stuff. And I'm going to be one of the judges for that, um, which you know, amazing because I love dogs, um, and they they don't attack me like cats do. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> I will post on the link uh, very soon. Um, so that you can all see that. So if you do have a little pooch um, and you think he's adorable or she's adorable and want to post a picture onto the competition and enter that, um, that would be fantastic. Um, and uh, the closing date is the end of December. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'll post the link of that shortly onto the comments below. So if you do want to join, have a look, check it out, um, and don't miss out, basically. Okay, so we've got our star. We've got Paige. Okay. She, Emily Coles to join her. So, oh, um, well, I've got someone coming through. Oh, oh, no. I've got uh, someone coming through, but I'm not sure who yet. But I've got um, pain in my head. I feel like it's some sort of cancer. Um, but I'm going to wait to see if I get something else through so i might just go with cards for a minute i've got some cards drawn if you want me to go right Paige. i feel that at the moment that you're um you're quite content that you have the first card i drew for you was balance but i don't feel like that you are unbalanced if that makes sense i feel that you're quite on a level playing field at the moment and i feel that you're just plodding along and you're gradually getting where you need to be but you are ensuring that you are making the right choices to ensure that the balance is right there between family friends job and studies everything like that i feel that everything is where it should be but i do feel that there is an aim that you are working towards at the moment um i do feel within the next 12 months that there are going to be there is that light at the end of the tunnel for you and i do feel that you are going to reach this um and i get it stronger because the other two cards that i do get is I've got lights here and I've also got material harvest. I do feel that, that what you're working to towards is going to help you get to the aims of maybe buying a house or buying a car. I feel that what how you're balancing life and things at the moment is getting to that aim getting that, that light at the end of the tunnel and having that thing that you've dreamed of, that you've wanted of. And I do feel within the next 12 months that you are going to reach this. Um, and I do feel that that is going to give you that overall contentment that you've needed in your life. So I do hope that makes sense for you. Yeah, just following on from what you've said. Oh, gosh, I can get it right in a minute, won't I? Five of Cups, uh, Nine of Wands, 
and the Knight of Wands. So I feel like at the moment um, that um, there's too much pressure. You feel like you can't make these decisions because there's too much pressure. And once that, once you kind of step back, that once you step away from all the pressures that have been put on you, that you're going to find it a lot easier to make those um, decisions. Um, but it's got to be when the time's right. And you know that. And I think that deep down, you know that you'll move forward when the time is right. Not when everyone keeps pressuring you to do, to keep making a decision. It's almost like it's make this, make this, do this, do this. And you're like, whoa. And I feel like almost you come into a breaking point that I'm strong, but um, I kind of feel like you're strong to a point. Like with the nine of ones, it's almost like I'm strong to a point, but you're pushing me and you're pushing me and you're pushing me to a point I'm going to break. And actually, I think you kind of need to just take a step back and just say and and, and say to people, yeah, I'll make those when I'm ready to make that decision. But it has to be right for me. It has to be right for me and not right for you. And I think once you kind of take that pressure off, you're less likely to. I feel like this card depicts kind of like, yeah, you feel like you're running. You want to run. It's like fight or flight. And I kind of feel at the moment it's like a, a more of a need to want to run because the, the pressures are getting a bit too much. And actually, you kind of need to just step back a little bit. And I think once you do that, um, I think that you will kind of move forward. And I think Laura's about right, about a year's time, 18 months. I think that that's definitely the time that you're looking for when it's right for you. I think you've got kind of a bit too much going on at the moment to be able to make decisions with clarity. And I think that once you take that pressure off yourself and almost like an anxiety, I feel an anxiety building in you. Like it's all like a pressure cooker almost that is just going to go and explode. Um, so I think, yeah, I think you kind of need to take that step back. And, and and know that that's okay to do that as well. And know that that's for you for you to say, actually, it's all right. Because I think that would be the right decision is to be able to move away. Um, but yeah, I feel like I've got a man coming in. Like I said, I've got a lot of, uh, a lot of pain in my head. Just trying to decipher what that is. I kind of feel like it's all round. So I'm kind of thinking it feels like it could be like a cancer in the brain, um, whether it's spread, because I feel like it's coming from my body up into my head. Um, I don't know if you can take this page. Um, it's a quite a tall gentleman, older gentleman. Um, I want to say around my 80s. Um, smart looking man. He gives me, it gives me a bit of breathlessness as well. So, um, yeah, just trying to work out why he's here. Hmm. It's more like a, like a calming, it's calm. It's, it's almost a message of calm. We need to calm. You need calm. So I think it kind of relates into what this reading is about, really. Um, can't get the closeness of who he is yet. I want to say dad's side. But I can't pinpoint who he is at the minute. This is making sense page. Anybody there? Hello. Anybody? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> yeah, I feel like this. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, it's making sense. But we'll have to check with family. Okay. Yeah, as I say, I've got a. It's just a. It's coming in to say you just everything needs to be calm. I think it's just it's almost like he comes and he puts his hands on your shoulders. That's what the feeling I'm getting is like a 
it's just he wants to calm me down calm everything down just to tell you to take the time time but yeah i want to say dad's side quite really kind of smart he would have worn a suit so i'm talking that's why i want to kind of say he wasn't a young man so i'd say in his 80s when he passed i do want to say something with a head but that's what i'm getting through then if you can connect in ryan any more on that or laura do you go first law no i've got a block okay <laughs> So let's have a little look. Uh, so as I move my mind to him, I'm being shown the month of June and I'm being shown around the 10th, 11th of June, something like that. Um, I feel as though um, as I take my mind to around that time as well, Paige, um, this gentleman comes in a little bit closer now. Um, he does make me feel as though I've got something going on with my head. I know I'm feeling maybe something more like um, an embolism or something like this that's that's causing uh, quite a big impact there. Um, and I also feel with this that there must have also been some sort of like tumble or something where I've bumped my head um, because it's making me feel it's taking me to this place. But I'm not getting my sensation that I normally get for cancer. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that he hasn't got that and that isn't what you're connecting with. But I'm not getting that that same feeling. Now, what I am getting, however, is that, Paige, there's – I'm coming to your energy here. Um, there's this feeling that I'm needing to become a little bit more reserved or to um, adjust your, your – the things that you're doing to to interest you um i'm what i'm seeing is like a little bit too much of the vino or a little bit too um yeah a little bit too much of um uh socializing and, and going out and enjoying yourself as a just that it makes me feel like i just want to calm you down because i feel like um this gentleman particularly uh wants this just to calm because i feel at times you're not necessarily putting yourself at risk that's the wrong word but you're gonna end up burning yourself out you could you're not doing the stuff that you should be doing yeah you're not monitoring or, or regulating yourself it's it seems to be an all or nothing excuse me nothing with you there's no middle ground and he just wants to create that stability there um because he makes me feel yeah like at times you can be very very intense and at times you can then be very very withdrawn and he just wants to sort of meet you somewhere in the middle with that um I've just had something tap on my desk, um, just really random, like a sorry, tap. Uh, he's also making me feel here, Paige, that um, yeah, that you your your gut instinct about a situation around work at the moment, um, you need to actually listen to. It's been ticking away for a little while, um, probably the last three or four months um and it's almost like you're you're just not listening to that um um that inner voice that inner connection there you're you're, you're trusting your head and not your your gut um i've just said that noise again <laughs> let me just make sure i'm not banging on saying no um and Paige, as I come close to that situation, it just makes me feel as though you've been umming and ahhing about changing your work situation. You've been umming and ahhing about changing lots of things, to be honest. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's also been talk about changing your hairstyle because your granddad's saying, no, oh, not too short, not too short. So I don't know if you've been talking about going, getting your hair chopped, um, but he wants this to be um, a bit longer. Um, he makes me feel as though... Can you hear that noise? Yes. I don't know what it is. Um, that again? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. 
Is it raining? Um, Have you got a window? I've got a window, but it's not open. Yeah, but is it raining? And is it rain hitting on the window? Nah. Nah. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so he's just saying about your hair. Keep it not too short, not too short. Um, but he makes me feel like there's this need for change around you. Um Okay, but yeah, so let me just ping back to their page. Um, oh, you're right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Yes, so just to ping that back, um, as I say, he just does want you to know that he's around you. Also, he wants you to know that he's he's very aware of, of the work situation, but also the hair situation. Um, and that's his way of saying, look, I'm here. I haven't gone anywhere. He said that over the last month in particular, that although those some of those restrictions had been lifted, you felt more lonely within that last month than you had done for a long time. And emotionally, he wants to lift you up out of that and have you in a much more uh, or recognise that you're surrounded by that love, recognise that you've got that that support coming from, from the people that matter and the people that are there for you. Um, okay, Paige, so we're going to leave that with you unless anyone else has got anything else? No. No? no. Okay. Should we do another? We've been on here for an hour and 50 minutes. Yeah, let's just do one more. <laughs> one more. Okay. Um, so... Guys, have any of you got a question? Not necessarily about the well, about the spirit world, or about let's let's test these girls' knowledge. Let's uh, really? see see how they're they're doing and how they can answer some some spiritual based questions. I did warn them that I was going to throw them in at the deep end tonight. You do um, all the time. I asked them if if they were crapping themselves, and they said no, we we're actually all right. And I um, said, well, that's not what best you get best you get your nappies ready, girls. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> not quite what I said. Laura oh. said that she was happy. Yeah, because I had meditated and then he started going, well, I'm going to throw this, this and this. And I went, no, I'm shooting myself. <laughs> With the language. <laughs> so, guys, have you got any questions or anything that you'd like us to have a quick dip into? So I've got a question there from Sam. Do you all have people come through? Do you mean, do we see people? So I don't okay. see anybody. I, I get, a, I, I feel. We get feelings. I get feelings or... Um, or something. So, it, it's thoughts in my mind. So someone will come close to me and then... Um, so I get feelings. Um, so they'll. So if they had a pain, uh, they will project that onto me, and then that's what I feel. Like with emotions, that's what I feel. Um, then I, I get words instantly. Sometimes um, I can't always connect, but if you think about it quickly, you try to get an answer, and then it's words that just appear in your mind so it's the first thought that comes into your mind and is normally linked to the, the person that's coming in for me yeah i get blocks quite a few times as you've seen this tonight i've just not been with it um but yeah like last week when we done it we were it was words will just pop in my mind um i'm i don't get feelings as such um you mandy gets more of that overtakes her i occasionally get a feeling of pe chest pains but mine's more words come into my like into my mind and i get it through that way okay and for for me i get a little bit of everything so i See spirit, feel spirit, hear spirit, sense them, taste them, smell them. Um, mm. they, I allow them every faculty of my body. Um, 
and uh, yeah, I also allow them to entrance me and talk through me and, and stuff like that, which is great. Um, but what's really important, and I think we demonstrate it here, is that mm. we've all got a very different relationship with the spirit world. We're all very unique in the way we receive that information and the way we present that information. Yeah. And something that I'm very, very proud of, or not proud of, wrong word, very, very uh, mindful of, that's the better word, mindful, not proud, that was, ignore the word proud, mindful of, is the fact that there, there's a medium for everyone, yeah, so out in this, in the world, there is a medium that will be able to connect with you perfectly, and connect with you, so, and your loved one so crystal clear, it's amazing, but there is not one medium for everybody, so I'm not the, the medium who will be able to connect with each and every one of you because maybe our personalities clash. Maybe your loved one is uh, um, totally against my type of personality, my type of my sense and, and find my connection very, very alien to them. That interaction is not going to be amazing. However, they may have a better resonance with a different medium or a different uh, reader. Um these guys and myself are psychic mediums, so we connect with your energy and we also connect with the energy of your loved ones in the spirit world. So, yeah, so we can connect on um, on that mediumistic level where we have people chatting to us um, and coming close to us. And we can also connect with you and your energy and your stuff, your bits and pieces that are going on. Um, so, yeah, good. OK. Nicola asks, have you had a lot, uh, a not so nice spirit come through? <laughs> okay, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, that not, not so much doing this, but um, we have encountered a fair few, I would say, um, doing ghost hunts. Um, quite a few locations there not been some very nice ones um i had one at coal house full um who actually um wasn't a very nice character um he was into um rituals where you sacrifices human sacrifices i remember that one um he wasn't very nice um that was children wasn't it yeah, um, and he used to prey on women, so he would walk between the guests that were there. Um, then that was one of our live events, wasn't it? That we had that yeah. was that that was Tilbury Fall. No, 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 when we did Coal House Fall, so it was oh, okay, that was a long time, it. yeah, a long yeah, time ago, yeah. Um, but more recently, um, we did um, one at our secret location, um. <laughs> He really oh. did not want me there or any of us women and definitely not with Ryan um, <laughs> to the point where actually he shouted at me and bear in mind we are in the pitch black in the middle of nowhere, oh. one door in, one the same door out and he really, really shouted at me and um, yeah, it wasn't um, so much so he actually woke um, Ryan up or his guides did <laughs> and said who the does this person who's this twat <laughs> <laughs> basically so uh, we do yeah you do get some not nice characters we have a lot that kind of lurk don't we in the shadows in the yeah. shadows yeah mm. and then how do you cope with it how do you manage that situation uh, we don't take no rubbish um, we yeah. we don't in the same way she would physically. No, um, right. but yeah. So basically, they would kind of talk to you know. We know that they're there. Um, it might make other spirits that we're talking to um, quite fearful. Um, they don't necessarily like those um, those other entities that are there. So um, we just won't have it. We just say to them, "Come on, come out. You know, you want us gone. Show us you want us gone." Come on, do something that you want us gone. You know, we're not scared of you. They might be scared of you, but we're not scared of you. And I think once you kind of stand up, generally, they kind of tend to back off. But, um, yeah, you don't kind of, you just tend to stand up for them. Or run. Yeah. Either way, depending on how bad they are. But, no. Yeah. 
how you deal with it. I think. Anything on add, Laura? I antagonize it. I antagonize it. Antagonize them. <laughs> I'm a nightmare. <laughs> Especially one at Margate in the stairwell. Um, that's yeah. <laughs> you know exactly who I'm talking about. No, don't you? All of these ones. These are my favourite <laughs> locations. These are my favourite connections because half the time I don't remember it. <laughs> like, <laughs> afterwards, I'm like, "What has happened?" And um, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay, so mm. Kellyanne asks. Uh, if you see something in the corner of your eye, does that mean someone is with you? Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes, Sometimes. It means there's something in the corner of your eye. And your yeah. hair could be in the way, or there could be a shadow of somebody walking down the corridor. We've got to think of the normal stuff first. Yeah. So once we've got rid of all the normal bits and pieces, we can then start thinking of the paranormal. We can start thinking of, okay, what's that thing? The biggest thing that will help you understand whether that is a spirit connection or in fact your imagination um is the feeling that goes with it if you get that sense that that connection of love or of, of a change in that energy that's when you'll recognize that it's somebody else and rather than any you the feeling that comes alongside it um is the important bit to recognize yeah How did you know you could feel spirits? Literally on a ghost hunt. So my favourite investigate, my favourite form of Moment. investigation is okay. to do um, human pendulum, and it went from just being the uh, channel. So um, basically, someone stands in the middle. You have a what are, what we call catchers either side. <laughs> Sounds worse than it is, but it's not. So you would literally, um, you, and you ask Spirit to come forward and you ask them to show us one way for yes. And then once they've shown you that way, it could be forwards, could be backwards, could be sideways. You ask them then to show you no. Um, and then from there, um, so I would, we would get involved in those investigations, so the paranormal sort of human pendulum. Um, and then it progressed into hearing words. So before the question had been asked, I would get a word in. I would get a word and then it kind of just went from there really and then you kind of start to tune in and it's really a, probably about trusting your instincts and what you're feeling what you're hearing what you're sensing it's just being in tune with your body and trusting your senses i suppose mm. and laura how did you first realize See, mine was more that i had smells first um I always knew mine was through my granddad. I always knew that he was around me all the time. Um, but then we started to smell his pipe. Now, no one in my house smoked. So we knew that it it couldn't be anything else apart from my granddad being around us. Um, and I had one or two situations in my my old house where... I felt a breeze across my face, but there was no windows, there was no doors, there was no explanation, other explanation other than it could be spirit. So, yeah, that's how I, uh, how I knew I could. Um, for me, um, as uh, anyone that knew me when I was a kid, I was always a little bit sensitive. Some might say camp. Um, <laughs> From a kid, I could always sense and feel spirits. Um, I didn't always um, uh, I don't know what you mean, Paige. Um, yeah, I'm hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Makes more sense. Um, and uh, um, la, 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 what was I saying? Yes. So for me, when I was a kid, I could sense and see spirit all the time. Um, it's not something I made a big song and dance about. It's not something I um, told a lot of people. I used to freak my sister out because uh, I'd stare behind her, sort of like through her and look sort of here. 
and uh, you used to see people building up, you know, energy. Um, and she was a nutter as a kid, as I'm sure anyone who knows her could agree. She was a bastard kid. Um, but anyway, she was. She was awful. Um, <laughs> she was. She was horrific. Anyway. Um, I'm sure she'll see this and, and comment at some point. And like, so Kellyanne knows my sister. She'd agree. Um, bastard kid. Anyway, so we, <laughs> I used to be able to see in Sanskrit. And then at about the age of 12, um, it stopped for me. Um, and then at 14, it kicked off again. And then it all sort of spiralled from there. Um, which leads me to the next question, I think, was Charlotte. Can you switch it on and off? Yeah. 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 So it's yeah. more about, because some people talk about opening and closing your chakras. And, and my firm belief on this is you can't close your chakras, otherwise you would be dead. Um, your chakras are your energy centers that, that flow naturally. If you'd close them off, you would be dead. Um, what you can do is you can tune into the spirit world mm. and you can tune back out again. It's like a radio. We just change yeah. it onto the right station and then uh, we can then get off that station again and come back to sort of physical station. Um, and I like to sort of um, describe it as that because that becomes almost what it is. When, when I teach people to open up to the spirit world, I teach them to expand their radar or their aura and allow that energy to blend with it. Um, um, and I think that's really sort of quite yeah. uh, an easy technique that takes away a lot of the, the preciousness that people put around it. You know, this is a normal faculty that everybody has, and it's just about controlling your own body and your own energy. It's no different from letting a fart out. You know, it's natural and well, maybe a little bit different. Um, but it's there is no, you know, the, the connection. Oh, sorry. I'll have another look in a minute, um, Abby. Um, okay. Oh, that's because you asked for a little bit of a reading type thing. That's okay. I can have a look. We can have a look at that in a minute. Um, let's concentrate on this. Yeah. So it's just a natural faculty of your body that and of your energy to be able to tune in and expand. Um, da, da, da. Ah, okay. Do you, oh, I've missed an original question, which was, do you ever get... If you've got a double link, how do you separate them? I can't master how to. So clearly, so you're a trainee, you're you're a uh, you've been developing in some way. Um, so yeah, she went on to then ask, "Oh my mm -hmm. God, is it? how would you advise me to learn to separate a double link?" Now, do any of you question. get? <laughs> That's your question. You I think it's women? really hard. Like for us at the moment, like it's really, I've not had anyone double come through. No. Um, but I, you, I think it would be just about asking the question and see because sometimes, I've, obviously, I've seen it with you that it's sometimes the information <laughs> they give is very, very, really similar for two people. Sometimes. Um, and then it's about asking that right question as where, because sometimes there'll be that one link that it is different, and that's how you separate them. Yeah. So, for example, on Sunday, just gone, yeah. I was doing an evening. I did our last evening for um, November in uh, blah, 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 at Spectra Nights in my centre. Um, and um, I had two people come through at the same time, and I've spent quite a while trying to connect with these two people who were very, very similar, all the way through, all the way through, all the way through. Then one person could take one bit, the next person couldn't take that. And then they'd flip-flop between, yep, no, yep, no, yep, no. And it was getting frustrating. And then I moved my mind, my guide, my, my helpers, and said, come on, sort this out. You need to help me out here. Let's let's move this. Um, and... Uh, and then at that point, um, they, oh, she's disappeared. I think her signal's just gone. Um, 
And then at that point, um, they start to give me specific things. And I ask them just to step on different sides of my body so that information can come in from a different perspective. And then what I do is I work between the two at the same time. So I'd be like, your nan's like this, but your nan's like this, but your nan's like this and your nan's like this. And I, so I, I bounce between those two connections because there'll be a, quite a similarity there um, that, that binds them. Um, yeah, so it's just about being in control. It's about moving and shifting your mind and being um, forceful with it. So actually, you know, your guides are there to support that interaction ask them to sort it out for you ask them to to move your mind or give you that piece of information that clincher if you like so that you can pinpoint exactly where you're going um yeah i think that's uh a good description oh laura missed it you couldn't antagonize uh, her. she could trust me i've lived with her for years <laughs> I keep smelling my nan's bubble bath. Is this a sign she's near? Yeah. So, oh, excuse me. We've had a little discussion there just a moment ago about people getting signs from their loved ones, getting that connection there of the pipe or the cigarette smoke or the certain perfumes or the certain mm -hmm. sensations and smells. Because that's going into our subconscious mind, because that's we're not sitting there and, and analyze it and trying to. So, for example, it's much easier to give a smell than a than a, a name or a, a feeling because we smell things naturally without going. I know I'm going to go and smell this this flower. You know, we can smell flowers as we walk past. Our mind is, is used to being open and receptive to smells outside of our control. You know, whereas thoughts and feelings are often something that we're very mindful of and very much in control of that. So the spirit world will often use smells as the first one of the first signs of showing that they're around because it's easy for our mind to connect with it because it's a it's an external stimulus. So because of that external stimulus, we don't we don't push for that that control and that sort of um mm. Yeah, authority over it. We can just accept it that it, here's a smell. You know, someone's farted, somebody's um, got nice deodorant on. We accept that because that's what happens. The spirit world recognise that we can smell things without having to analyse it, and they can then work with that. Hopefully, that made sense. Right, I've got to go. You've got to go as well. I'll yes. finish these questions, um, guys. Yes. Nice big thank you to the pair of you. Obviously, you've both gone now. Well, you're going now. No, I'm going um, now. Well done. I'm sure everyone would agree oh, that it's been a fantastic evening. Uh, we will be back. We will, we're will. we going to start limiting the time of these because it's very easy to get carried away there and to keep going. Um, so we're, we're going to limit it, but we'll have discussion on how long we limit it for. Um, I'm going to stay on for a little bit longer. I'm going to answer some of these okay. questions. Um, so yeah, thank you very, very much. Okay. See you all later. Bye. Bye. So it's just me now, guys. Uh, unfortunately, aren't they doing fantastic with their development? Um, I'm very, very proud of how far they've come, and I'm sure you will all agree. <laughs> Del, you bitch. <laughs> so mean. Okay. So my wheel, um, it's uh, a wheel of fortune. So there's numbers. It's just one of these. Number 18. So basically, I'm a teacher in my day job. Um, and uh, I've been doing some online learning, online delivery and stuff. So I will give each student a number at the start of the lesson. And then um when i um want to pick a student at random i'll spin the wheel and then their number comes out and then they uh they get a question um so it's just a resource also i do quite a lot of quizzes and and things like that for charities um so that's what that's for uh nothing exciting i'm afraid um, what's next? Who's next? Uh, 
Um, Paige, I'm a bit of a control freak. So when I'm in um, medium mode, um, I get my mediumship stuff. When I'm in my day-to-day um, um, -day mode, I get day-to-day -day stuff. I don't tend to um, mix the two things together. Um, mainly because I'm a little bit of a, as I say, control freak, but also when I've, because I've, I've been doing care work for many years, I don't want to know people's personal business. I don't want to know who's in people's houses and what's going on for them um, and stuff like that. It's a breach of confidentiality, it's a breach of um, boundaries. Um, and also I'm very passionate about your boundaries. So if I was walking down the street and I tuned into you and, and started looking at your stuff, that's not fair. That's not a, a nice thing to do with to somebody. Um, and equally, um, I'm very mindful about my own energy, my own um, time and effort. Also, I hate drippy mediums, mediums that will go, oh, I've got somebody coming through for you. I'm going to just give you this little bit and then I'm going to move on and give you this. Little bit. No, let's consolidate and give you a decent bit of information that you can fully understand um, and that you can um, take away that evidence from it. Okay. Can I feel when something bad is going to happen? Um, I was in a car crash. I nearly didn't go to work that day. I feel like there was something telling me not to go um, because something bad was going to happen. I went and ended up in a crash. I can't explain the feeling I have someone telling me not to go. I felt physically sick. Now I feel like paying for it. Now I feel like I'm paying for it. Um, I'm going to move that just so you can see me. So I'm not like poking my head over the top. Um, so for me, um, I don't often get those things. I will get a gut instinct because energy is not linear. And in, in time, sorry, is not linear. We don't measure, we measure time in a physical sense. So in seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, years. The spirit world measure time in energy, in the amount of energy and the amount, the length of energy that it's going to take. When we have that idea in our head, um, we are able to influence that experience. So, you know, we don't predict, we're, we're sensing how the energy is flowing. And that's the difference. So for me, I might get a sense that the energy is flowing in a particular direction. I can then do something about that. So, for instance, um, I will often I'll pull a card for the day. Um, so my card for tomorrow um, is going to be, let's have a look, is going to be, uh -huh. oh, change, change phys physicians. So this is about looking um to find the right healer for me the right situation in the right path now tomorrow i've got quite a lot of closure coming i've got a lot of situations that i'm putting an end to and moving forward with hopefully um so that makes a lot of sense i'm also starting a new pathway um at the weekend which is going to be really exciting um and um that's going to allow lots of uh, situations to flourish um, for me, that's about healing, that's about letting go, that's about moving forward. But also, who knows what's, what tomorrow's going to bring, but it's about, for me, I believe that's about change, and about allowing things to develop and move. Um, I don't often get bad things when I do readings for people. I might get a sense that, you know, your energy is unfolding like this. This is a likely outcome. If you don't like it, do something about it. And that's a really important message that you've got control of your life um and that you can do something with that and i think that really answers your question as well nicola about um if they tell you that something bad is going to happen they can't tell the future what they can say is that you know if things are going this way things are unfolding this way um that that then means that this is a likely outcome now for example they might predict uh, a pregnancy um they might predict uh, a change in job now if you don't want to get pregnant 
you can do things about that. You know, if you don't want um, to to have a, a change of job, do something about it. If you do want to change a job, do think about it. And, um, you know, if they say, I don't see you having a divorce, you can do something about that. Um, <laughs> so actually, it's just advice. It's it's your energy is unfolding this way. If you if you carry on down this road, this is the likely outcome. Um very, very important. I have absolute utmost respect for the spirit world. But what I also recognise is that you are uh, spirit in body. So I've got respect for your energy as well. I think that's really, really important. Um, Fee, uh, yes, I do do readings. Um, what I do, you asked earlier on. Sorry, that's why I'm saying that. Uh, who asked? Where was it? It was you. Um, I can't remember, um, but I know you, you did. Um, I do do readings. I am thinking of taking some more bookings very soon. They will be done on on for a virtual means. Um, I've I will probably they will probably last between half an hour forty five minutes. Be about thirty quid. Um, you'll get a sound clip recording. I thought it was you. Yeah. Um, you'll get a sound clip recording of the, the reading as well, and that gets sent over as a, a Dropbox link, uh, which you can download and keep. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's sort of what I do. Um, I will be putting relatively soon a post out that just says, um, I've got three spaces at whenever. Um, first come, first serve. First pay the money into the PayPal, obviously message me first otherwise I don't I don't want everyone's money popping in there and not enough spaces but I don't do it very often um ah thanks Nicola um I don't do it very often because I'm um I live a very hectic life uh, <laughs> um uh Yeah, I mean, this new format, if it works for people, I'm going to carry on doing it. As I said, before I used to put a little donate button on, um, because I think it's important to be able to give back. Um, I don't, for evenings like this, we obviously don't charge you. These taster readings, they are short snippet readings. Um, but full readings, obviously, are a lot more in depth, and I go into juicy, gory details. Um, <laughs> uh, I haven't done 30 East Drive. I would love to do it. Um, it's one of my, it's on my bucket list uh, to go and do. Um, I feel like I've missed somebody out. Cool. So what I do, as I say, I put a post up on the page rather than um, message and, and directly uh, interact with people straight away because I've got... Um, probably about 50 people that have shown an interest and I don't have the capacity to do readings for 50 people and to make bookings and follow it through. I'd be here like sitting there for next year. Um, what I do is I say, okay, I put a post up and I say, oh, I've got five spaces, X amount of spaces. Um, normally I do it in school holidays, um, but I'm thinking of doing it perhaps at the weekends, maybe one day, um, each weekend just to give a little bit of extra uh input um but we'll see um but guys have you enjoyed this evening have you had a good time have you um yeah do you enjoy this new format with with my two my two guests uh my spiritual sisters um because i think it's working really really well i think they are um fantastic mediums got a lot uh, have come a real long way and are doing a fantastic job um for me a massive heartfelt thank you to the pair of them but also to you guys for allowing us to connect with your loved ones for being up there guinea pigs if you like um and uh working with them uh page yes everyone has got a gift to connect to spirit now some of you will be natural healers and your your 
um, gift could be that you're um, a, uh, you're able to, to blend with the spirit world and provide spiritual healing. Um, some of you may be medium, so you may be able to connect with the spirit world and allow yourself to be their voice, if you like. Um, um, and some of you may... Um, just be able to be that person for somebody to, to be a vessel, if you like, for the love from the spirit world. Now, I believe that every single person um, is has the potential to be a medium, has that potential to connect with your loved ones, to move into that space um, and to connect in some way. But, and this is the big but, I also believe everyone's got the potential to play the piano. I don't believe everyone's going to be Beethoven, Beethoven or Mozart. Yeah. So what I'm in that in that same phrase, I believe that everybody is able to be a medium, but we're not all going to be amazing mediums. We're not all going to have that amazing connection with the spirit world. I'd love to improve even now my connection um, and my my. Um, I still learn on a daily basis, even though I've been doing this 20 odd years. Um, well, 20 years this year um, for the spirit world, practically actively working, um, doing readings, doing connections like, the, well, not like this. It's all very new. Um, but connecting with people's loved ones in a mind, in a, um, in a purposeful way. Um, and uh, I've lost the plot of what I was saying then. Yeah, and even I've got things still to develop and still that I'm learning. Um, but I get now my lessons directly from the spirit world, directly um, from from them. They teach me. Um, and I've got some interesting things that I'm looking to practice and looking to develop. But as I said, come um, post-lockdown, uh, probably the summer, I am going to be looking at doing some workshops. I am going to be looking at doing some more circles, more training. Um, and I am looking in the meantime of doing an online uh, circle once a fortnight. So this is going to be an opportunity to um, um, to train, to learn. Um, so it will be via, um, I will have a specific page set up where people will be able to log on and join that obviously will be limited to those that have joined that group um, and be able to train. There will be a small fee attached to that, but that will go towards the charity connections and towards the centre um, because obviously we've, we've got overhead still, we've got insurance, we've got a rent to pay and stuff like that. And it just all goes to supporting that. None of this goes into my pocket. I don't earn from any of this stuff. Um, but I think that it's really important to provide those techniques and those strategies, teach people how to meditate, teach people how to move their connection to a, a lighter stage. Paige, I saw your question ping through. Oh, thanks, Nicola. Um, Last question for me. I know it's late. Do you feel like you have a better connection when you're in person or on a one-to-one? -one? I think you mean as in a face-to-face one-to-one where I'm dealing directly with somebody or and or comparison to a, a video one-to-one. -one. For me, they're very different connections. So on a, on a practical face-to-face one-to-one, I do, I find, um, so say, for example, you were sitting here in my room with me um i can move better into your energy it gives you that opportunity to say hold on a minute i don't understand that and i can go back for more information it makes that interaction flow a lot better it means that i can create a more in-depth connection and, and clarify things that you don't understand so i do like doing that what i love about doing this type of connection with you all is that I have no control of that. I don't get to see your reactions. I don't get to see your face. I don't get to hear you gasp. I don't get to see you um and ah. So I don't know if this is spot on or if you, I mean, you know, I don't know what your reactions are. So it means that I have to trust in the spirit world. I have to trust that connection a lot more. And since doing these, my mediumship has developed significantly so that I've moved away from 
questioning maybe or not necessarily questioning but waiting for a response needing your voice to carry on that connection to enhance that connection into being in that space where i can um just embrace it and just move with the flow um and i'm sure you know i trust i'm sure that you can see sorry that i trust explicitly um my guides, my helpers, the spirit world, your loved ones, to get it right. You know, I'm quite happy to say what comes out of my mouth is unfiltered. It comes from your your guys um, and my guys working together to give that interaction. And I think it, it's important to give them that opportunity without me going, um, 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 I don't know, but um, um, actually just trusting and going with it uh, is really important. Okay, guys, I am going to call it a night also, uh, mainly because I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> um, hopefully, you've all enjoyed yourselves. Hopefully, you will see us again very, very soon. We are going to try and do it more often, um, but once a week at the moment, I think. Uh, if you do have any questions or anything else you want to, to discuss, hold on to these thoughts because we are going to, I am going to add in at the end of each evening um, a question time. So you can ask these types of questions. So get a little notepad, jot your questions down um, and uh, have this as an opportunity to learn. Um, so guys, have a very, very lovely evening um, and uh, I'll see you all soon. Hopefully in the flesh and in face to face um yeah cool right bye everyone